Well, I, I I do want to be completely honest about something, just so you know. When you blow up more and more this year, we are going to repeatedly uh, link this interview out. And be like, look who we had. Look, you see her everywhere. See, see, was on we did it first, guys. We were first. <laughs> Definitely. I oh, my oh, oh, no, she said no. <laughs> What is up, Wrestle Geeks? Big Mike here with another special edition of the Countdown City WrestleCast. With me, as always, my partner in crime, we got Tommy. You. And today we have another special guest, one of the top rising stars, not just in Texas wrestling, but in wrestling today. Indeed. She is currently the Tomahawk Pro Wrestling Women's Champion. She is the Inspire Pro Lawless Darkness Champion, a title she picked up this past weekend. Yeah. It is Maya World. Hi, yeah. guys. Ah, thank you for having me. Of course, Maya. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Of course. Uh, so we're going to start where we normally do. Now, obviously, we'll get here in a second. You have not been in this business very long, uh, and you're, you know, you're you're still very young. Um, but let's go back to your childhood. Were you a wrestling fan growing up all the time? Was it something you were always into? Oh uh, yeah, so I did. My brother actually is the one got me into it. He was watching it one day, and um, I just walked in his room because I always mess with him. So <laughs> I walked in, and uh, I I never I never remember what it was, but I think it was Undertaker like coming out of a casket, and I can't remember if it was on a Raw or SmackDown. But I remember it was Undertaker specifically, and yeah. I was like kind of like frightened. But I was like, "Whoa, this is really cool!" Um, yeah. And then I actually started watching the wrestling. I really like. Uh, and then my favorite wrestler growing up was Kelly Kelly. Like, I love the Divas, obviously, but Undertaker was my favorite. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm at training, if y'all hear that. Bubble. That's cool. <laughs> That's okay. But yeah, so I was I was a really big fan. I, I surpassed him as a fan, actually. Like, he would watch really? it, but I, I, was a, I became a bigger fan than he did, actually. So, was there ever a time... Because we, 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 a lot of the people we talk to, they, they, they're fans as a kid. And then they kind of reach that teenage, and sometimes they're not sure... It was there ever a time where you kind of turned away for it, or after you surpassed your brother, or was it just always there? Uh, it was definitely like, yeah, it was like when I got to a certain point, I kind of like I stood away, I got away from it, only because mm. like I started getting heavily into my sports. Like I played basketball and I played like AAU, so like all summer I was yeah. traveling, playing, yeah, and then when yeah. the season came, I would like you know I was just busy, but I never got like I could. I actually would tune in for pay-per-views. If even if I didn't like watch the weekly Raw and SmackDowns, I would get away yeah. from watching that. But I'd still like tune in for pay-per-views and stuff. I still remember like not watching it in a long time. But then I found out Undertaker's streak broke, and I cried. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like twenty, like what twenty fourteen, because yeah, I, yeah I, I just was I wasn't into it really. But yeah, I definitely always did keep uh keep keep going back to it. And then twenty fifteen, I'd say I saw Sasha Banks, and then from there on, it's just been. Big fan ever since. Like, I I don't think I've missed anything that she's been on ever since. Right. That's all. Awesome. Well, I was there live when Undertaker Street got broken. Let me tell you, it was as <laughs> devastating as you think it was. Bruh. That that, cr that crowd, our our energy level shot straight to hell after that happened. I heard. Like, I could. Bear, I don't think I watched that actual match or ending again till like 2020. Like, I couldn't. I, I haven't watched. Watch, I haven't watched that whole paper. I was there. I haven't watched that WrestleMania <laughs> since then. <laughs> I was hard. I love that, that like it's such a traumatic moment for both of y'all. It was literally <laughs> so traumatic. Like I was like, why? Well, see, mine was coupled because that trip also wasn't very good, unfortunately. But then that happened. I was like, what the hell did I come out here for? So, yeah. 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 I, it just sucked the whole life out of the room. It did. Fine. Yeah. And I remember we <laughs> sat there. And we're like, okay, one, two, th th three. <laughs> we just yeah. kind of look at each other like, yeah. Ooh. Oh. Um. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that was uh that was definitely a moment. Yeah. And uh, what's what's that super fan like Meba Ellis or oh, whatever? Yeah. Is, yeah. Like, <laughs> Do you know I mean, how many think... jokes I heard that that was me? <laughs> Do you know how many people said that was like it's like Tommy? I was like, first of all, I don't look like every black guy with glasses. <laughs> 
Because I mean, no, you do tell the story that at one point you were like the only black wrestling fan at many shows. So. That was in San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, excuse me. So, uh, in your youth, you said you also played um, basketball and, and you went into AAU. Um, so, how big was the sports also a part of your life uh, growing up and into your teen years? <laughs> Oh, I like basketball. I picked it up in like sixth grade. Like I really was uh, in softball. Like that was my thing. I stopped in like 10th grade uh, for softball because I got like basketball started becoming like, you know, like I really started like getting noticed. So right. up softball. But yeah, it started with softball. And then I picked up basketball. I picked up cheerleading. I picked up volleyball. Like I picked up so many sports. Like It was just it wasn't like a pastime. It was like I was passionate about all four of these sports. Like it was heartbroken to like have to let them all go to focus on one that I actually wanted to go to college for. Right. But yeah, that was like the biggest part of my, my whole childhood was sports. That's why wrestling was so easy to love. Yeah. yeah. Did, outside of wrestling, did you have any kind of sports icons you looked up to? Or, um, like Say it again. I'm sorry. No, no you're good. Uh, outside of wrestling, did you have any other sports like icons you looked up to? Anyone in sports in particular? Oh, I didn't even play tennis, but I love Serena Williams. Like, oh, I, well, yeah. I could watch that. Like, yeah. I don't even like tennis. Is not really that you know uh, interesting. <laughs> well, actually, no, I lied. At first, it wasn't to me, and then I started loving her. That I could watch anybody like tennis, uh, her, and like I love LeBron. Obviously, he's an icon. I loved Kobe. Uh, I'm trying to think of more women. Yeah, yeah, but Serena was the main one who I was like, yeah, I loved her. And maybe maybe I'm weird for paying attention to people's Twitters like I do, but uh, I've seen you mention Lamelo Ball a few times in your. Oh uh, yes, Twitter. <laughs> I love Lamelo. Uh, yeah. But people are probably like, "Why do you like so many people from different teams?" But I just love like watching and people who interest me. I I will yeah will, like watch whatever they do. So, but yeah, right. I love Lamelo. and I love Lamar Jackson, which y'all probably know because y'all see my jersey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with no. that. But also, like, when you have those players in a sport that can transcend it, that makes you want exactly. to watch something you wouldn't yeah. normally watch, I mean, exactly. You know, yeah, that's powerful. So, yeah. Serena yeah. Williams was definitely that. I know, I know yeah. a lot of people who did not care about tennis until her and yeah. Venus started playing. And, like, right. honestly, I didn't, I didn't know anything about tennis until they started playing. So, <laughs> yeah. So. No, I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're real big in sports, you're doing the basketball. Where does the change come where you start thinking wrestling is something that you get into? Was there something with sports that kind of you realized you couldn't go further or you did or, or where'd that kind of come from? It was kind of like that. Like I was passionate about it. I loved it. Uh, so the college I went to, they didn't give out scholarships. So I was paying for my own self to go to college since it was like a, it was like a Baptist college in, in Arlington. Okay. So I was paying for myself, you know, like the whole team, like they didn't give out scholarships. So, yeah. I mean, I, that's not why I left, but it was just like, first of all, I was draining my money. And then also like, I have this. So my friend who actually, we got into it together. She moved down from Houston to Arlington because there was a school, DFW Opera, which I started at, right. that she wanted to start at. So she came down here for college at UTA. So she was like, hey, there's a school. I know we've been talking about it because she was a big Sasha fan. That's how we met. She's like, no, we've been talking about it in this school. They're, they're having tryouts to see if we like, see if we like it. So like, do you want to do it? Uh, this was until after I left actually, but. Mm. Yeah, but um, yeah, something kind of happened to where I just had to like let it go, let basketball yeah. go, and I still like miss it. Like I didn't want to, but I had yeah. to. Uh, but yeah, so like the next year, like uh, she came and she was like, "Yeah, there's a school. Uh, they're having tryouts just to see if we like it." I was like, "Obviously, I'm gonna like it. It's freaking wrestling." <laughs> so we we did it, and I loved it, and we started in October 2021. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Uh. Another question we ask a lot of people, and we, we've got some great answers in different ways. What do you remember about your first day training? The first day you get in there and actually start doing stuff. Okay. I, okay. I like where this is going on. Uh, I can't wait to hear this story. <laughs> oh, oh my. Okay, so the one that I remember, okay. So the new people, we come in, we just did this really hard warm-up, which – it was just a really hard warm-up. It's not even in the ring yet, but we got finally got to the ring, and it's just like, so we started with rolls always, and um, that was fine. The bumps, uh, I had to get used to the bumps. Um, I just remember like 
not being confident and doing a lot of things until I actually did it. And then you realize, like, you just have to do it, you know? Yeah, Instead yeah. of, like, being scared of doing it, you just have to say, fuck, if I could cuss, just say yeah, F it and do it. Yeah, uh, mostly that. Like, yeah, it was always a lot of cardio, always a lot of the bumps. I would, right. uh, I had this routine because the, the bumps hurt so bad. I'd go home, I'd put an Epsom salt bath, and I would have to sit in it for, like, 30 minutes after training every time. Uh, but, yeah, it was, it, was, it was rough at the start. Mostly like having to get used to the bumps in my, because you know you're falling for a living, right? And yeah, you're not used to that, so you had to get used to that first. But mostly that. Yeah, and it's funny because we we've heard people talk about you know having to get the cardio in first, uh, getting used to the bumps. I don't think anyone's ever told us what they did when they went home uh, to <laughs> deal with that, because I can imagine that's that's pain every day for a while. Yeah, yeah. That you just have to get used to. Yeah, yeah actually, and Epsom salt had a lot to do with it, though. <laughs> yes, it helped. It did. I had it down to a science, like hot, hot water, Epsom salt, sit in it, and then you're good. Oh, I love that. As long as you, hey, you had a system. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> For you, how long into that process where you start doing bumps, you start learning stuff, did you feel like you were really starting to get a hang of it and – that you also realized your athleticism was a big asset for you? Uh, I want to say right off the bat, but my coach did, like, tell me, like, I basically was, like, kind of natural with it because, like, I could, the way I moved in the ring, you could, like, he was, like, you could tell, like, you did sports, basically. Yeah. Uh, he was just, like, my footwork was already, like, kind of good off the bat, which is, like, a big thing in wrestling. You, you realize that later, but my footwork was always good because, you know, because of the sports. Um. And then just like already having like, like knowing my limit with in terms of cardio and stuff, like I could go, I could do a lot more than a lot of people could do just because I played so many sports, you know? Right. So it's just like, yeah, I realize, and they always say like those sports help you, like, especially when you're wrestling, because so many things go into that. So yeah, straight off the, kind of, kind of off the bat, but like, you know, you still have to get used to it. Yeah. So, like, so how how hard was the, of the was the transition from like going from basketball to that to pro wrestling? I know you mentioned the bump story, but how well, how hard was it like the transition, like mindset and everything? Oh, for wrestling, just having to realize that you're not gonna get everything off the bat, even though like, even though uh, I don't know, like you, you're not gonna get everything off the bat in terms of like understanding everything you know mm -hmm. uh yeah. but it's just like i don't know it's not really much different for me it was just like the car you had to get used to the cardio like i already said the bumps it's just like but it's definitely a totally different mindset in terms of like falling for a living like i said but eh, it wasn't really like too hard to kind of adapt to you know okay that's cool and we know where you're at one of your main trainers if not the main one is uh lou Gotti. Um, if you turn around and tell him that Tommy's on the interview, <laughs> I'd be interested to see what kind of reaction you get out of that. Because uh, him and man. him and Lou have a very long me, history. Me and Lou have a love hate relationship. This is true. <laughs> we love to hate each other, but you know that's that's neither here nor there. You know, right? I'm actually so actually I'm at uh, NPX, which is Athena School, and she literally just oh. left five minutes ago. Oh, I was like, if you want to ask her, I was, I was, gonna, I was, I was, I was gonna say, oh, another person I have a love hate relationship with. Ugh, that's <laughs> okay. <so> much better. <laughs> yeah, I. I don't know how you feel about this, Tommy, but maybe we can do this off air. You can explain the picture to her too eventually, <laughs> because we have known Athena since literally she started, pretty much. Yeah, like we we were watching her very early in her career, and um, and we've seen her go through. But uh, yeah, her and Tommy have had many interactions themselves uh, back in her earlier younger days. Oh lord! Even more, even more love, even more hate. Let me tell. <laughs> She's great. She is. She is. No, she's fantastic. No, she so you started with DFW Pro, uh, mm -hmm. and and then you made the 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 kind of the shift to MPX. Well, did you see much of a difference between those two? Was it about the same or? Uh, I would I would get a lot of the same stuff. The only thing is Athena's obviously been on TV. Is she like? Yeah, yeah. I was just saying. He even told me like himself, like. Yeah, I can give you a lot of advice, but you know, she's been she's been to the top kind of like she she can give you way more advice than I can. So just like learn everything you can from her. Use her as like a mentor. So yeah. It's like I've learned a lot from both of them though. Yeah. That's really cool. And um 
So we have that you, I, I think you told us earlier, your first match was in 2001 or 2002? My, my match? 2022? Your, your first, like your first match. But yeah, my first match was in August 2022. Okay, okay, okay. yeah, that's what Cage Match had. Um, what do you remember about that? Uh, I remember hating it and hating everything I did, and uh, I just wanted to be perfect off the bat, and I kind of don't, I, I wasn't. So uh, I had to just get used to like knowing that you're not gonna like everything that you first do. You have to just kind of keep going and not giving up, basically. Uh, I also remember like having to uh in training go harder because you have to like train how you're going to be in the ring that's right. another thing after that <laughs> and do you feel like at that first match you really knew who maya world was or or what you were trying to be uh, as a wrestler or um you know has that has that really changed as you've gone through this last year and a half it's probably it's definitely progressed as I've gone through. Like the first match, I feel like I was just trying to like, I don't know, I I was just trying to get through it type stuff instead of being my being me. I definitely like as it went as I went on through my matches, I've definitely learned a little bit more about who who my world is and who I am in the ring as I went on. The first match was definitely just like I'm just trying to win basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that perfection and, comes from that. Oh, sorry, Mike. I was gonna say I think that no, perfection comes from that basketball mindset because I've known a lot of people who, who like when they play basketball, they 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 have this feeling of when they're told they have to get it right the first time. Probably kind of translated to you in a way when you hit when you were first match you have to get it right the first time in a way, right? right. For sure. Yeah. Sorry, right, go ahead. No, it's okay. Um, I was gonna say you win your first title pretty early too. Because again, like we said, you've barely been in a uh, you know year and a half total, pretty much. Um, what do you remember about winning your first title uh, so early in your career? Oh my gosh, I, I remember being very shocked, and I remember ha having it handed to me and looking down, like, "Bro, you just won like the first championship." <laughs> <laughs> like, because you know, I I knew like I was hoping it would come, but I definitely didn't think it'd be that quick. So like, I'm just looking yeah. down at it for a long time. I'm just like. Wow, and like the crowd's going crazy, and I'm just, uh, it's like chills in the moment for sure. I was really just like, wow, you, you did it, basically. It was just right. it was an insane moment. <laughs> uh, and so uh, for us, our, at least I'm, I'm pretty sure Tommy hadn't seen you previously, but our first interaction with you was at Mission Pro. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was technically before you got in the ring. So uh, I believe you debuted with Mission Pro at their June True Color show. Yeah. But you were at the April show, uh, okay. and not not wrestling. And I think Tommy said you may have been injured at the time. If I had heard um, correctly, was there an injury, or was it just that? Oh, I actually, in? my injury happened in like what? Did you are April? Because I think it was oh. the April show. Yeah, so that my injury happened. Yeah, around that time, actually. Yeah, okay. It was actually no. My injury happened after that. I think it was. Okay. I just wasn't booked on that show, and I, okay. Oh, okay. I had to film some things with them. Yeah. So, yeah, that's just it. I, I just okay. Was, okay. You know, watching. And stuff. I well, the other reason I remember is because uh, we had the front row. And yeah, like I, I, used, I Yes, yeah. I usually sit at the corner. And then like I came back from the merch stand and Brian came with another chair and I was like, oh, someone sit next to us. And then it was like a VIP. Brian's like, come here and sit here. You can watch the show from here. And I don't know <laughs> if you remember this, but I was like, uh, hey, I was like, hope you don't mind. We get kind of loud. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> and, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. And so, you know, I guess if that's your first introduction to Tommy by sitting, you know, a couple seats away from him. What? It was. What? It's just me, though. I like it. That's, I feel like that'd be me. If I wasn't, like, trying to be in my cool, mysterious watching, I would have been just like that. So. <laughs> we appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah. See, it's not just me. Other people <laughs> are, are crazy, too. <laughs> Tommy, 
every clip from Mission Pro, who do you hear in the background? Look, this is neither here nor there. This is all about Maya right now. <laughs> uh, then you you debut against uh, Brittany Brooks, I believe, mm -hmm. at the June True Color Show. Mm -hmm. You know, first good match. Then in August at Boiling Point, I think yeah. this is what really got the uh, Mission Pro crowd behind you. You beat JP Harlow. Oh yeah. And yeah, the and the men's revolution had spent much of 2023 causing a ruckus. Uh, and yeah. then you come in and shut them up and we were like, oh, our new favorite. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Talk, uh, I feel like JP just overlooked me a little bit too much. And I told him not to, but I mean, hey, that's his fault. And I'm also going to throw this out. I feel like they've pretty much been on a downward spiral since you gave them that first defeat. And just I said the of... same thing. <laughs> I mean, they have. yeah. I don't, well, want to, I don't want to tell the Mission Pro fans to thank me, but like, you know, a little <laughs> applause would have, you know, I, you know the pipes. Right? I'll thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you, my world. I, don't, I, I, I have no problem. Right. We didn't know you, but we were like, yeah, we, yeah. we like her now because she I beat mean, JP. I mean, because I hate them so much. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched they were very they were very annoying to yeah. certain extent. But you know what? They they were running amok and they were always coming yeah. out on top up until then. Up until and then. And then after that, it's just been pew. it has been. Uh your second match, which was a good match, but a little harder for us because you know it was against Izzy. Uh, <laughs> it was her second mission pro match, and we've gotten to know her down here in San Antonio. But yeah. I mean, you were impressive. Um, and since then, you you've kept the streak going. You are undefeated. Yep. Uh, at Mission Pro. Uh, and now coming up, you have a chance to win tag team titles. Oh yes, I do. Uh, against another one of Tommy's favorites. Oh gosh. And I say that with complete sarcasm, Jasmine. Oh. Oh, yeah, because okay. because no, cause, no. Cause there's no love hate there. It's just hate. Hate <laughs> hate 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 hate. hate. It's all hate with that woman. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, at least I know who you'll be rooting for. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. 1,000%. <laughs> Thank and you. And I'm just going to throw this out there because we, we know you obviously don't want to share your, your partner's identity. But if it could be Athena, I mean, just going to throw out that's a really strong choice. You know, y'all want to hit a couple uh, double O faces on Jasmine and her partner. <laughs> Down with that, yeah, just throwing that out there. Just beat up, a, just beat but up Jasmine. You have my partner now, and we are. I'm trying to think if we're going to make an announcement before, still. Um, we'll figure that out soon. But right, I do okay. have my partner. We're, ready. Yeah. we're getting our gear ready, and, and we're, we're winning. So that's all you got to know. Yes, yes yeah. that's what I want. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and officially announce it. We are definitely cheering for you and your partner. Yes, okay. whoever that may be. like my partner. I, I already like your partner because it's going to be opposite <laughs> of Jasmine. So okay. <laughs> okay. Although let's let's throw this out there because um, another person who's come to Mission Pro recently was Angel Blue, uh, who has gotten back into wrestling recently. And yeah. our joke on here is that Jasmine and Angel Blue as a tag team would be Tommy's favorite tag team, um, because much like Athena, Tommy has known Angel Blue for a long time. Mm. I think they have a longer. very. Oh God! Oh uh, yeah, you probably have. Um, <laughs> but Tommy, what if on the off chance it was switched? What if Maya's working with Angel Blue? I'll what, still cheer. Do? I still cheer. I'll cheer for Maya. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I could just go ahead and roll that possibility out. It's not. Okay, angry. fair enough. Oh, thank fair God. <laughs> Angel Blue, she's really cool. Woo! She's the worst. Uh, I mean, the best. No, I meant the worst. I, I, I meant the worst. Uh, uh, I mean, other than that, have you done anything cool recently? Oh, wait. You showed yeah. up on ROH TV. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. We're not a pay-per-view facing Athena in a Proving Ground match, facing Queen Amon uh, Amanada. What was that yeah. like, uh, that Texas run that you got to go uh, spend time with the ROH and AEW people? It was it was awesome. I seen so many people like I I I didn't fangirl a lot. There was like two people I was like, oh shoot, it's them over. But like it was it was definitely like a fun experience. I got a lot of advice, especially from like Mark Henry, which was really cool. Um, and the matches, I mean, 
the matches were the matches. They were <laughs> Athena. I still like am so like grateful. I still get chills thinking about it that she gave me the opportunity to showcase what I can do. Yeah. But now anytime I go on there, it's not just gonna be like, okay, this girl is like, I don't know what she could do. So we're just gonna have her do this one minute match. Um, <laughs> I got to show what I can do with Aminata, which is also really yeah. fun. He hits really hard, uh, but y'all know, <laughs> yeah. y'all know. Yeah, and we and we were there. Awesome. We were there at Frost Bank in San Antonio for that one. Oh, yeah, okay. uh, which was really cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's she's awesome. Um Right. It was just it was really fun. I'm I'm glad that I don't know, I didn't I didn't think I'd get the opportunity that early in my career to like mm -hmm. show what I can do, but since then it's been like crazy for me. Like I've gotten so many new followers, so many new people who yeah. are like always tagging me things and liking my stuff and so many DMs. And I feel like it's kind of like it's kind of like it happened right at the end of the year, so like for this year, it's gonna be like way more, way yeah. more than I anticipated, just because I have so many more people looking at me and yeah. so many more quote unquote supporters. So yeah, it, I mean, it's been amazing though. Yeah, no, that's I, awesome. I will, Go ahead. I was gonna say I will add a little tidbit that I I I was at Ring of Honor Final Battle and I did see you oh. come out with Shane Taylor promote with Shane Taylor <laughs> yeah. as part of Shane Taylor Promotions, uh, I, which which. I did fanboy a little bit. I was like, ha, I know that. I know that person. So, <laughs> but yeah, so, <laughs> yes. But, uh, but, yeah. but yeah, and with Shane, he, I know he always does his best to also try to help whenever he can put someone over oh, too. Yeah. And so uh, I, that's always really cool. Cause I, cause I, cause I was like, ah, that there, there goes Shane being the cool guy he is helping. Help, 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 help. Yeah. That was super fun. Yeah. I remember when we first got there, uh, we were in the back and then we got to go into the ringside and bro, I was like starstruck. The stage was so pretty and then just the yeah. setup, everything was amazing. And then we got to, I didn't even know we were going to be able to do that. And then he told us and I was like, bro, and I, I, it's so many chills that weekend. It was like, a, like on a wrestle high, the most wrestle high I could ever yeah. get. Oh awesome. yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, for sure. Um, outside of those tapings with ROH, where obviously there's a lot of AEW people and some of that. Have you been at shows or any other promotions where someone else is in the locker room and you're like, I can't believe they're in this locker room too. Have you <laughs> run into any other people at shows that kind of been oh. like? Yeah, actually this black, this past weekend at Tomahawk, uh, Tommy Dreamer was there. He got to watch my match, which he's like the, <clears throat> he's one of the people who like gets talent for impact, which right. is awesome. And he told me like that he really loved my match and that like I keep going basically in that. Yeah. And you never know what's gonna happen, but that was like, it was starting uh, because cool. just who he is, and just because like the opportunities I can get from being under someone like him. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely, Tommy Dreamer. Um, uh, Chris Masters was there too, so that was kind of cool oh, to see. Cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, I know he's had a little bit of a renaissance with his career recently. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he keeps popping up every now and again. Um, so I, I, I want to ask because I know you were uh, at Reality Wrestling a few times. How has that experience been for you? Because uh, that, that's that's another really big one here in Texas. It's been so. Booker T is awesome, as we all know. Uh, yeah. He's literally amazing. Um, he actually really enjoyed me also. So I'm going to be back there a lot more now. Uh, oh, cool. I got to see some cool people there, too. Uh, I don't know if I can even say who, but I got to see a lot of cool people there backstage. Uh, and also when I was at their Summer of Champions show, like Trick Williams was there. And yeah, mm -hmm. I've gotten oh, that's just, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, from being there, I've gotten to meet like a lot of cool people also. But that's been yeah. really fun too. And just getting those fans in that Houston scene. Um, it just, the batches I've got to have on there were, were awesome. Like I had a six man scramble with some people from out of state. Jada Stone was in there. And then I had to have an awesome match on the Friday, which we're going to hopefully run that back soon since she's a champion now. But yeah. Yeah. I'm all for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we forgot to mention this talking about all the cool things before the end of the year. Um, you make the PWI Women's 250. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, basically, again, a year and a half in, and, and you're making that list. What was that like uh, when you found out you, you were a part of that? Yeah. So, I I honestly, so basically, I really didn't start on the indies till May of 2023. So, right. I didn't think that I'd even get, like, any recognition from any list from that year until the next year. And I didn't mm. think they were going to count me as a rookie that year. Because, basically, I wasn't even, like, seven months in when the list came out. So, right. I mean, I I just wasn't expecting it at all. And then to be on the Rookie of the Year nominee nomination also, I, I wasn't expecting either of those. So, just from seeing, being a part of that, because 
those magazines I would watch growing up, or growing up, like, I would watch Sasha Banks. She would always get number two. She never got number one, but it's, it doesn't matter. Anyways, yeah, yeah. I would always, <laughs> like, and I would, like, I was really into them. I love to see the rankings. I love to see the people who are, like, on yeah. those lists. So being a part of it, I didn't, I never thought it, I'd get it this early. Yeah. That's awesome, though. Def- definitely well deserved though, because you you definitely yeah, you. yeah people who because like <laughs> I did I did I did laugh like how often I would see your name come up like all of a sudden it just seemed like like after a couple of months you just were blowing up everywhere and I was mm-hmm. like I was like I was remember thinking that's awesome but she's right. like everywhere now <laughs> I, did that for me too. I literally so I was talking to Brian Keith I was like at at, at a point did you feel like out of nowhere you started kind of blowing up he was like yeah and. <laughs> Okay. And yes, same thing. And he, I mean. Yeah, he is another one who ha- who has that story because yeah. the and the funny part with him is that I actually got to meet him and we and he was a big time heel at Heavy Metal Wrestling. Heavy Metal ran out of this bar in uh, 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 in here in San Antonio. Maybe maybe a hundred of us could fit in this bar. There were no chairs, and he was the heel all the time, and we would roast him all the time. And then next thing we know, like a year later, after Heavy Metal closes, he is everywhere, making a name for himself, having these killer matches. And I was like, he right. earned it because we roasted him to oblivion when he was in that building. So. Yeah, obviously he's blown up way more than me. He's everywhere. But I literally asked him, I was like, yeah, like, it just feels like it's kind of out of nowhere. Like, and I don't know, I feel like I this is bad, but I always feel like I don't deserve it yet. But like, I had to like, get out of that mindset, like. If yeah. people are noticing you, it's because you deserve it. You know, like yeah. I always felt yeah. like I didn't deserve it. People were, people were like questioning if I would be humble about it, and I kind of like it. Kind of made me keep quiet on certain things, but yeah. but yeah, it did feel like kind of out of nowhere with everything. Yeah. Well, I, I've I've always felt like humility yeah. and being proud of yourself can be can be a very fine line to walk, but it's also but it's possible to do. Like in your case. Yeah, of course you want to be humble about it, but I don't feel like you should shy away from it either. Because like, 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 like we've been saying, a year and a half in, you've got all these accolades already. You're, you're, you've already been on ROH, you know, TV. There's nothing, to be, there's nothing to be ashamed of there. That's that's right. all hard work coming to fruition. And I, and I say, if you have to toot your own horn a little bit, yeah, I'd say go for it. <laughs> it's my world because from the beginning, I've always said it's my world. My world toots her own horn all the time. So- <laughs> There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and and you know we're old dudes who've been watching wrestling for a long time, so I think we've watched enough to know like they're not just going to pick a random person that sucks and be like, oh, let's let's make them cool. Right. Like you've got to earn what you're getting, and when yeah, if all sure. these people are noticing you, then you deserved it because they're noticing you. So, yeah. um, as we said, as twenty as twenty twenty four embarks, like you're blowing up, you're you're becoming a name all around wrestling. Um, What's your goal in the next couple of years? Uh, kind of bigger picture, or what are you looking to do as you as you move forward? I definitely, uh, my number one goal when all of this is like said and done is obviously to get to WWE. I want to be signed to it. Well, WWE is my like I want to go there, but if sure. any other company like looks at me and they like me, I'm obviously gonna go to whatever I feel is right. But right. I also want to like go to Japan. I want to go learn the strong style. I want to learn the uh, not strong style, but like the uh, what is it? Azumi does the high speed. Sorry, high speed. The high speed. Yeah. I I want to be I want to be in that kind of scene. Like that's my number one goal to go to Japan. I was just gonna say that answer just made you more of Tommy's favorite. From that oh cruise. yeah, I see that. Japan, Japan, Japan. Bro, I, bro, I literally love. I can't. My eyes are. Their pay per views. I'd be up till three a.m. watching those things. Like they're literally so cool. And Azumi is definitely one of my favorites in the world. Maya, did we just become best friends? I think we did because I, yeah. I, I, I stay, I stay, I every year I stay up to watch Wrestle Kingdom. My oh family. yeah, I watched it. I just watched it a few weeks. All right, last week I stayed up till what six a.m. Yeah, it was, yeah, I was up to six. I I I want to I'll tell you this real quick. One one a couple years back when I was still living at home with my parents, uh, I'm at their house right now because of my house getting stuff fixed. Long story. But uh, one year I was here. I was uh, when I was here, my cousin was staying over for for the week, and so everyone had gone to bed. Of course, you know, Russell Kingdom started at one a.m. and here I was watching it at right. like six. Everyone was getting up to go to work, and my cousin said, "Dude, I heard you at like five. I was like, "Sorry." <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Danielson and Okada are over Yo, 
see. You want me to be quiet? No. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't wake up half my half my half my parents' house with that. I was like, yo! So right, even yeah. like Yuya Yamura's match was amazing. Like I, it I was. Loved it was really and good. I got to like, and I felt on a personal level because like I got to ride him to a few shows when he was doing his little indie circuit. So I'm like, that's my friend. Right. Like that's my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Not really, that's but. Awesome. He yeah. doesn't know, but he is my friend. <laughs> yeah. My friend. He doesn't know it yet, but we're he friends. But we are. And Tommy, I don't know if you can imagine this, but I just want to point out, can you imagine someone who's training under Athena wants to go learn hard style in Japan or strong <laughs> style? Um, um, I can imagine it only because it's kind of like Stockholm Syndrome. She beats them up so much, you would be like, hey, I want to go to another place where they get beat up a lot. <laughs> Because yeah. it already happens to me here. What are they doing like <laughs> in other countries? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whoa. Exactly right. Yeah. So yeah, that, that sounds like an Athena student response. I'm gonna go to learn strong style as opposed to no no Japanese strong style. I know Athena strong style. That's called that's called training. So <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Whole, yeah. Yeah. That's just regular. This is a whole different. <laughs> uh, well I, I I do want to be completely honest about something, just so you know. When you blow up more and more this year, we are going to repeatedly uh, link this interview out. And be like, look who we had. Look, you see her everywhere. See, see, was on we our did show it first, guys. Years. We were first. <laughs> Definitely. I... Oh, man. oh, no, she said no. I think she's going to her car. Yeah. Yes, I can. I'm so sorry. Like, No, it's I... okay. No, you're fine. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so I mean, 2024, like you're blowing up, you, you got big things ahead. Um, we expect to see you at a lot of different companies, a lot of different promotions. We yeah, yeah. expect you to be a belt collector coming here soon. Uh, yeah, I literally have like, so this weekend I have, I'm facing for two championships and then like next weekend I have two more. I really have a potential to be like a seven time champion in the next two weeks, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, because because even RCW, you'll be in the in the Rumble Royale, the women's Rumble Royale. Yeah, we'll see you in a couple weeks too. Well, Is it? so I don't know. Matt, well, okay, Maddie was the women's champion. Right. Obviously, she went to NXT, and it's vacant. Right. You're having a Royal Rumble. It seems like he hasn't announced it officially. Right. It seems like why else would you do that? But that's what I was so, thinking. You know, yeah. well, we don't know yeah. for sure, but. All I know is after you collect all those belts, we obviously need the picture where they're just like yeah. hanging over your arms and your waist and oh. your shoulders. I call it the oh. ultimate dragon picture. Yes, the, yeah. the, the Super Prepare, J curve. Like, if, yeah. When that happens, prepare to be sick of me because y'all going to be so sick of me when y'all see all those pictures. Challenge yeah. accepted because you're going to have to prove it to us. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I, well, yeah. I tell everybody. I tell everybody if my if any anything I write ever beca becomes like a movie or something, get, get, I, I might, everyone might have to just disown me because I will never shut up about exactly it. Exactly. Like, hey, like hey, 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 here it's gonna be a TV show, and you shouldn't have to. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And, you shouldn't have to. and your and your friend should love you for it. So yeah. Uh, Tommy, you got any other questions or? No, no questions. Just wanted to say, like, like I said earlier, because uh, like Mike alluded to it as well. Uh, for your success to happen, like it's happening, with, with the internet and everything like that, you know, people can find just about who anyone is nowadays. But if but if promoters are looking at you and saying, "Hey, I think she's got it," and they're booking you everywhere, that just proves that you've got it. Uh, to me, Thank so you. I just I just really I I agree with Mike. I feel like by the by the end of this year, you're going to have the Ultimate Dragon multiple belt pose. <laughs> And that's end of the year. I'm talking like by March. Like it's gonna happen. Well, <laughs> I'm good for March then, but then she'll have the pictures in April, which will probably be the next yeah. Pro show or something like that, and we can yeah. buy the pictures then. So. Yeah. <laughs> I will. And look, after you know, you you pick up that tag gold, you're just as undefeated as Tiffany is at uh, Mission Pro. And she, she put a promo out about being a, a double champion at Mission Pro, and I was like. I don't know about that because mm -hmm. her and Layla yeah, Grant are going to try to come for whoever wins, and I yeah. want that match. So let, let's let's make it happen. I'm I'm going to win, so it's going to happen. Yeah. Yes, I'm. But yes. then if she puts a title or a match for my title that I'm going to win soon, then I want one for hers, and then yeah. we'll see who's a double champion. Okay. I, I want all of this happening that you <laughs> just said. I want give me all the matches. <laughs> <laughs> 
One hundred percent. Yeah, just just uh, everything you're saying. I'm just like book it. I'd book it. I'd book it. Just like <laughs> this. This is why I tell everyone: if I ever win the lottery, I won't tell everyone, but there will definitely be signs. There will definitely be signs. <laughs> I already know what you mean. There will be signs. There will definitely be signs. <laughs> why did you buy the entire front row, Tommy? How were you able to do that? <laughs> like, cause I, I, so I could so I could put Jasmine Lore sucks in every chair. <laughs> One by one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got a visual for that now. That I, I, I think that's hilarious. Yeah, that's the, that's why I, that's why I really shouldn't play the lot. I don't often, but every now and again I do. I was like, I should never win this because it's gonna <laughs> it's it's gonna get ridiculous immediately. If I do. I feel like it's either gonna be one of the two extremes for me. Like either I'm gonna put it all away and be like very like it. conscious of it, or it's gonna be gone in like a month. <laughs> Like I feel like there's no in between. And my and, and and when I inevitably buy buy a promotion, Maya will be the first world cha- women's world champion. It's just gonna happen that way. So you know, it's just the number oh, so. Look, thank you. I like that, thank Tommy. You. But you know a lot of other people. Let's just be careful. This interview gets out. Just saying. I mean, I'm not saying oh, you're a wrong true. choice at all. That's true too. But you know. But 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 the one who will probably threaten me the most of bodily harm is Angel Blue, and me pissing her off. Well, that just means the day ends. In yeah, one. but that had nothing so. to do with you, Nate. You, you making Maya champion. That's just true. y'all every day. That's true. That's, well. that's also good. <laughs> okay. So oh, this wow. is also what happens in our interviews: is we get off the rails and we start going on tangents. Yeah, we've done that a lot. <laughs> but uh, it's sorry it's about that. One. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Uh, well, Maya, we appreciate it. Thank you for joining for sure. us. Uh, thank you for yeah. your time. Um, and again, honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, the future is bright for you. Yeah. Uh, we look forward to this year and going forward and seeing all your success. And uh, you should be very proud of it. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And I'll see y'all at the next mission show. Yes, for sure. Yeah, and we'll, and again, we'll see you in a couple weeks at RCW for the Rumble Royale as well. Oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So we can't wait. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. So thank thanks for joining us. Y'all. What's that? I said thank y'all. Okay. Thank you yeah, no, we really you appreciate, you us. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right, WrestleGeeks. So that was Meyer World, the amazing star that's coming through. Uh, otherwise, I'm Big Mike. This is Tommy. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you later. Peace.